G'day and welcome to Kogorolik. This is our um, pyrolysis enterprise. For the last three years we've been uh, experimenting and researching uh, renewable energy and the sustainable emissions ideas. So what we have here is a process where we uh, take waste plastics that are of no use and that are um, uh, a troublesome material for the environment and uh, we collect them, shred them into small uh, sizes, clean them up and then we put them into the pyrolysis machine. So the pyrolysis heats up the plastic and in the absence of oxygen the plastic melts and then uh, destructs into a vapour and we collect that vapour as a liquid fuel. So come on, I'll show you the process and I hope that uh, you get an idea of what we're doing. So here we have the melted plastic that gets pushed by an auger into the pyrolysis unit itself. Uh, here it's also heated, which you'll see uh, further in our, in our video. As the plastics reach the right temperature, they turn into a vapour and they go up through these three columns. And in these columns we have the catalyst that helps break down the, the hydrocarbon chains of the fuel uh, to the right lengths. Basically, through this process, we're returning plastic back to its original um, crude oil state. The only difference is that it's now be, it's a sweet crude in that it doesn't have any of the sulfur or other contam contaminants in it. So after it goes through here, then we'll take you to the, the cooling tower where we then extract the, uh, the liquid fuel out of the gases. As you can see, we've got lots of these electronic little gauges there for the thermocouples and uh, everything is electronically monitored and put onto a computer screen so that we can see in uh, the right temperatures um, at the, the right time and that helps us control, uh, study the process and to control it so that we get the product that, uh, that we want. So the pyrolysis reaction takes the plastic to a temperature of 380 to 450 degrees and after that we have to cool down those vapors that have been created and that's what we do in, um, in the, the cooling tower this is horizontal but it's a cooling tower and uh, as we cool it down the liquid drops out of it as a, uh, it condenses and then the gases that are left uh, are, they're, they're cool gases but they're still highly combustible and so we use them uh, back through the system and we have a, a gas meter here that tells us how much uh, gas we've produced and once the, uh, the process is up and running, up at the right temperature, then the whole process actually is kept running by the, the gases that are left over. The product that we're trying to uh, produce is the liquid fuel and that's our marketable product. So what we have here is a bucket of the crude oil that we uh, produced in yesterday's experiment and uh, as you can see it's liquid I can smell that it smells like fuel and um, uh, yesterday's experiment we we, uh, we took 60 kilograms of plastic through and we got about 45 liters of, uh, of the fuel which is good to start with but um, we need to improve the cooling system so that we can actually run the, the machine at uh, uh, for, for longer periods of time but we're getting very close to the product that, uh, that we want. This crude or sweet crude oil can then be distilled into a petrol, kerosene and diesel fractions and with some heavier uh, oils uh, uh, left over. Our goal after we're selling this particular product is come up with something that can be used in vehicles. Mainly uh, we're looking for the, the diesel range and uh, so far we're, we're pretty happy with the results. So you may ask, how did we get started on something like this, making pyrolysis oil from plastics? Well, I've been in rural Ukraine for more than 20 years now, and uh, I inherited a church where the congregation had what seemed like 100% unemployment. The people were poor, and uh, they uh, felt that they had no future. But I could see lots of opportunities around to help them put bread on the table. 
and then by creating jobs we can you know, gain access to their lives and enrich their lives and uh, help them forge a new future. I think that this is really close to the type of discipleship that the people really need here and uh, we're now looking not only to uh, have a viable enterprise here that's going to employ several dozen people which means affecting several dozens of families but it means c community transformation with the Christians cleaning up the environment and uh, making money from that and then we want to project our faith into the community and beyond. My dream though is to have people from the global south countries, the countries where the, the gospel is spreading the fastest, those are the ones that currently have uh, the least amount of resources. Uh, and if this type of technology that we've created will uh, help them clean up their societies um, and their communities, then we'll be uh, giving them the tools that they can uh, use to be sustainable. And that's what I want is to see sustainable missions happen. Um, and that's why I'm here.